What's up guys, I'm Alex. I'm Jason, for the Table Monkeys, and today we are gonna to continue talking about the triad of arm wrestling techniques. Yeah. Uh, and we're gonna start with what we consider the sort of top of this little triad or triangle uh, being the post. Yeah, the post, because the post is, yeah, close to the top of the hill. Obviously the high hook is the top of the hill, but that's, you really only get there off the go if you're much superior in strength to your opponent. Um, so you're really not going to be in those matches too often, or at least you shouldn't try to be in those matches. Yeah, you want more competitive matches than that. If you can just off the go get to a high hook, uh, like Alex said, it means that you're just way too dominant for your opponent because you've dominated all the fundamentals. There's nowhere where it's really competitive. Um, so obviously the high hook is the goal where you want to get to in a match, but it shouldn't be where you're starting or expecting to start. Yeah, sure. And we're also starting with the post because it's, it allows you to lead yourself to either the low hand or the hook a lot easier. Um, and you're probably set up for a post in the setup uh, and be able to feel your opponent a lot better, um, feel what they're trying to go for and make adjustments that way. But yeah, it's the most fundamental of the moves. Uh, so we figured it's the most important to start with. And like Alex said, if you do start trying uh, to go for a low hand right off the bat, but then realize that that's the wrong option uh, in adjusting to either a hook or a post, the adjustment is going to be so obvious in the setup. If, again, you're comparable with your opponent, they should notice it and be making adjustments too. So you're kind of uh, lost at that point. But if you start with the post, like Alex is saying, from there, the adjustments are so minor uh, to make in order to be now going for a low hand or a hook, mm -hmm. uh, that hopefully you're the one making the adjustments to your opponent set up, not the other way around. Yeah, exactly. Right. So in theory, you could have all three options available to you, but be showing only one move. Yeah, exactly. And one thing we've talked about before, which is something we really uh, preach in our club and we really feel is important and try to uh, hone ourselves as martial arm wrestlers, uh, is the idea of having multiple moves from a singular setup. Uh, so you can be unpredictable and you can uh, make those adjustments uh, without giving away what it is you're trying to do, mm -hmm. uh, at least too much. Because if you're comparable with your opponents, there should be some sort of back and forth where they know what you're doing and you know what they're doing on some level. Uh, but it is always a bit of a rock, paper, scissors, right? Yeah. Until the go, mm -hmm. you don't actually know. No. <laughs> Um, That's okay. the of our message. So, uh, yeah, I guess the next thing would be the fundamentals, the main fundamentals that you're going for in this move, right? Yeah, so, so. in a post, uh, in the hands, the most important thing is wrist rise. So that's my ability to get height through my hand, get this knuckle as high as possible, uh, break his riser down by getting mine higher, and that allows me to go over the hand and, uh, and pin him that way. Um, this is obviously, the, the post is going to require a lot of brachialis strength to be able to maintain this angle here. Yeah. But the reason we're prime, uh, giving wrist flexion the primary... Wrist rise. Wrist rise, sorry. That's the, the very uh, primary motion or strength that you need is because if he loses, starts to lose some arm, but he can maintain this angle on my hand, he's still got a lot of options. Mm -hmm. But now, in the contrary, if he loses his hand angle, but is able to maintain his arm angle and keep this tight, uh, it doesn't leave him as many options. He might still be in the match somehow, and there might be a way to get back in here, but technically speaking, like, again, if everything is equal and even, uh, he should be in a much worse position here than being, like, here. Yeah, so obviously, like, with them here, it kind of looks like a low hand, but you have to think that in the match, I fought up high and I got it taken from me. So now I'm a lot more susceptible to losing my pronation as well. Mm -hmm. um, so if I then lose my pronation once I lost my riser, but I have a tight arm, you know, I, I really don't have anything. And I'm also outside my shoulder. And since he was, like he said, going for something and then lost it, though he's in what looks like a low hand position, he hasn't actively been trying to get there. So he doesn't have pressure in my fingers. Uh, he doesn't, like he said, have his pronation securely locked, all the things that he's gonna need for a low hand, which we'll talk more about in the low hand video. Uh, but the point being that because he was forced into this position, he didn't take him or, or um, actively go to this position. Uh, he's in a much worse spot. Yeah, right. So just to reiterate the fundamentals of the post, wrist rise and brachialis strength. Yeah. So everything about pulling my opponent away from them and getting over their hand. Yeah, exactly. Um, and now what are the other, one thing that we should have mentioned this earlier, and we will mention this in every video continuously, is the idea that all of the fundamentals right. are somewhat involved in every one of these moves. Uh, you're not completely abandoning anything, really. Like, uh, you're still trying to maintain a certain amount of pressure in all the areas. It's just which ones are the absolute 
most important thing uh, to going for this move. So it's similar to like, you might see newer pullers where they'll set up like with their feet and their whole lower body, like they're gonna go inside and come inside and then they end up posting and pulling out. It's kind of the same thing here. It's like, if you're gonna go for a post, but you can't get your wrist rise, that is just not the right option. It's just, you can, everything else could be great, but if you're fighting to get height and you're losing the most important part of the height in your hand, that move's just not gonna work, right? So that's the main reason why we we're putting wrist rise as the primary focus for uh, a posting top roll. Um, but to explain the whole move, the other two factors in the hand that are very important would be wrist flexion or containment, and then some sort of pronation to finish. Yeah, exactly. So you obviously hear Devin Laird talk about rise cut roll being the fundamental move in arm wrestling. So I'm rising, then I'm cupping, and then I'm finally rolling through the fingers yeah. for the win. But it starts with that post. Yeah, and this is also why if you're a newer arm wrestler, uh, this should definitely be the first move that you really learn how to do. And we really think, especially now having uh, had this club for a couple years and having so many newer pullers, uh, it's great to just let people get in and bang and just kind of feel out arm wrestling and like, you know, do this stupid shit because that's what they think arm wrestling is and all that stuff. It's okay to let that happen a little bit, but it really will benefit the pullers and you'll get uh, people to progress a lot quicker. If you start explaining these fundamentals and getting them to actually work on these fundamentals um, early, early on. And the post, for sure, is the first one that everybody should learn, yeah. in our opinion, right? Yeah, I agree. So again, post, cup, and then roll and maintaining this angle on his hand the whole time, hips going under the table, not falling away from the table. Yeah. Like some people do this and they fall away or they get, yeah, they get back like that. Yeah. It's about going under the table in order to get that height. Yeah. And then up, cup, roll. Right, so, so let's talk about what this move leads you to mm -hmm. because obviously you can't always keep everything in a match that you want. Uh, you're gonna have to give things up to stay in the match and that leads you further down the hill. Mm -hmm. um, so if you start with a post, and I'm able to keep my hand strong because really this move is on the hand side of the hill, so the hand, side, hand is the most dominant part of this move. So if I go for my post and I keep my hand, but my arm strength isn't there, this can lead me to a king's move um, because I'm able to keep my, my hand high. I'm now focusing more on my pronation. I don't have my brack strength, so I can start to transition to more back pressure through my drag. And now I'm fighting in kings with that one. Mm -hmm. and, and partly here it might come down to whether this goes kings or open top roll would be containment. If he's able to maintain a lot of containment and take my pronation uh, in doing this, and like he said, control that rise, then he's now in more of an open top roll and he's probably gonna be trying to fight more to get back to like a high hook or yeah. like get this position here and, and get that arm angle back. But if he loses containment, but he's able to maintain his rise and his pronation, now he's again not worried about his arm and now it's leading even further down to the king's move uh, side of the hill. So the point being, once you go for that post, as long as you are able to maintain your rise, depending on what fundamentals you start to lose, you are either gonna end up at an open top roll or uh, uh, a king's move. Yeah. And from there you should, you know, hopefully you're still in the match and you can use those moves to maneuver either to a transition now or start to burn out your opponent. Yeah. But the point is, if you maintain your rise, then you've got those options. Again, if he loses his rise, the options become so uh, small. And really, if I, if I was able to take it and I'm at all a good puller, I should be able to finish that match from there yeah, because exactly. he's lost so much of what he needs. In order for him to get it back, he's got to give me so many things, you know? Um, so I guess the other one would be if you lose, let's say you're posting and you're able to keep your arm angle, but you really feel yourself losing pronation, right? That yeah. would be the other side that would lead you to. Exactly, so I start with a post and you start to come in on me and take my pronation. Now obviously it's, I can't really transition to a king's move or anything on that side of the hill because my pronation has been taken. And pronation is really the key when you get further down the, the hand side of the hill. If he, And if he were to, that would be a real desperation moment. That, Teach me about how to do desperation moment. That would be a real like, mm -hmm. that's all I can do. Like I don't trust my arm at all. Yeah. I have no side pressure. There's nothing inside for me. And you've taken away something I need. So now I've got to do everything I can to try to get it. Yeah. Um, which again is not like technically a great option. It's yeah. more of a like, of the moment yeah it's much better for me to then start to commit my shoulders so i can get more into a defensive hook 
and then put my arm on the line a little bit. And, and try to create a stop that yeah, way. Yeah. So again, that's gonna happen often because the, if I feel that my opponent is posting, the right option for me to try to do is crash in on him. So as the posting top roller, if you feel uh, that happening, you could make an adjustment and either change your setup to a bit more of a low hand, which is again why we suggest starting with that posting setup first, because now switching to a low hand in this situation becomes much uh, much easier, much more effective, much harder for me to tell what's happening. But if he starts in a low hand, like you start in a low hand, and then you feel that I'm posting, for him to now try to fight for height, and like I can feel that, it becomes so obvious, yep. and it's a lot harder for him to even get it. Exactly. Um, but the other way, it makes it better. So the first option would be either low hand with me when I'm hooking, or if you feel like you might be able to post out of it, and you're gonna be able to break through my fingers here, uh, but then all of a sudden feel your wrist going, you do what Alex said where you dive your shoulder in. Okay, so a defensive hook. Yeah, so those are your main options off the post if you're, if some components are failing you. Yeah. yeah, and I guess the, so in conclusion and the final thing just to remember about the post, it's best used against the low hand. So someone's dumping their riser and trying to drag and you can get over their hand and take them outside of where they want to go. Uh, and it usually gets beat uh, if you commit too much to posting by a hook, yep. right? So again, in that, if you commit to posting and start to get turned in, you can't keep running. As soon as you feel your thumb leaving your, your the center of your body at all, you've got to follow it and dive behind it in order to catch uh, that hook. Um, the only other option, like we said, is make that adjustment in the setup where you adjust to going more low hand in the setup, right? Yep. All right, so that's the posting top roll. Obviously, the best way to practice this is on the table, and all the comp all the components of what I'm saying are involved. But if you had to pick a couple exercises to do that would help your posting top roll the best, that would definitely be something that works your wrist rise and something that works your hammer curl strength. Yeah, those two exercises will help your posting top roll the most for sure. But yeah. like Alex said, and like we've said numerous times, and are going to continue to say. All the fundamentals are involved in all the moves, so you should be training them all as much as possible. But yes, priorities for this, rise and rack strength for sure. Yeah. So that's the video. Please like the video if you like the video. Leave some feedback in the comments. Smash that bell, subscribe, do all of those things. And monkeys out. Peace.